This is Marty Gabler, and I am on the go. And I know you are on the go, probably trying to watch this between appointments or just as you're settling down for the night. I am right here on the go on the Frio River and all of this beauty listening to this gurgling water go over these rocks. Uh, I guess it's just a wonder there's any water in the river at this particular time. They haven't had any rain since June. So uh, this river is just still flowing. It is flowing, it looks great. It's so peaceful, it's so beautiful. And of course you're not getting the uh, beautiful lush green of spring and summer because we are already in the winter time and I just wanted to come down here by this I was up on the uh, ridge above the river here listening to it uh, about daylight this morning back on up in the uh, brush and in the woods I could hear it and I thought I've got to get down there and share with the folks and on the road on the go segment there uh, I, I you know here I am with water typology again thinking about water and I'm on the go you know what that's like and I got the thinking you know uh, we're on the go and it requires water for us to get on the go and to stay on the go uh, we have to have water we have to have water in uh, our bodies and we have to have water in our engines in our automobiles uh, or we just cannot go uh, the uh, statistics tell us that uh, overheating of an engine uh, is as common in the winter time as it is in the summertime. The summertime is not the only time engines overheat. It's just as common in winter because those engines build up a lot of heat while they're on the go and they have to have water continually cooling their system so that they can stay on the go. And you and I have to have the water of life to stay on the go in the purposes of God. We need the water of life. And as I, I was uh, thinking about that and dwelling on it, meditating on it, sitting up there on the, um, I've been fooling with my old phone here and it's gotten me off of my scripture reference because I keep touching the screen, but I got it back, Psalm 46. And uh, some of you probably already know where I'm going with this in Psalm 46. Uh, I'm gonna go, of course, to verse four, but I wanna start with verse one. And in verse one, it says of Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength. That's where it starts. That's where it starts right there. We've got to realize that God is our refuge and strength. God is your refuge and strength. You need him daily. You need him all the time as your refuge and strength, and he is that for you. Uh, the second part of verse 1 of Psalm 46 says, A very present help in trouble. Verse two, therefore we will not fear. We will not fear. Even though the earth be moved and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, that would, that, that's quite a violent undertaking for nature, for the earth, for the sea, for water. Uh, the, even though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, wow. That, that's some major stuff right there. I think we can say that some of the things uh, in our nation that are going on are comparable to that. Uh, yeah, things are being shaken. Mountains are being carried into the sea. Uh, morals, values are being challenged. And, and uh, the enemy, uh, those workers of unrighteousness are trying to destroy those things, trying to come against them and block them and hinder the acts and the lifestyle of righteousness. Even though the earth be removed and mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled. Waters uh, represent in scripture at time, uh, populace, 
people, troubled people. Troubled waters is troubled nations, troubled people. And uh, the, the psalmist here is saying in Psalm 46, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling in verse 3 of Psalm 46, it says then immediately in verse 4, there is a river. So far, the psalmist has said, God is our refuge and our strength. That's number one. And then he has said, though the earth be moved, though the mountains be shaken, though the sea foam and roar, though, and then he goes right into verse four and says, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. A city is a dwelling place. It's where people dwell together. The people of God are known as the city of God, as Zion in Scripture. And we are His dwelling place and His river, His flowing beautiful river makes glad the city of God. This why I don't know if you can tell with this uh, particular lens or not on this camera, but this water is just clear, absolutely clear. You can see the rocks down there where uh, the water is flowing over it. And you can see this pooling over here under this huge cypress tree. Look at that magnificent thing. Oh boy, in the spring and in the summer, it is really beautiful with all its greenery. Look at that clear water. The waters of God ushering out from under his throne that the prophet spoke of are clear, pure, clean waters. Waters of holiness and righteousness and justice. And God is giving you and I that life flow that we need. He is our, the psalmist says, he is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That's what a car needs that's overheating. It needs some fresh water. It's spent the water. The water's leaked out. A hose has maybe burst or there's been an accident. There's been trauma to the vehicle and it's lost its water. It's got to get back to that water again. And you and I need that water of life that flows freely from our Lord, from our God, and he gives it freely. Isaiah the prophet said, come, come to me and buy water without price. <laughs> you that thirst, come unto me. And Jesus said that when he was ministering in the Gospels. He said, come unto me. God is wanting us to come unto him. He's not pushing us away. And if your uh, condemnation that's working in your heart, if guilt, if, if, uh, if failure, if things that have caused you to lose hope and lose heart have tried to separate you and push you away from the presence and the fellowship of God and his blessed Holy Spirit and his awesome, lovely, wonderful son. It's not God. It's those things that you're giving too much place in your life over. Come to him. Drink of the waters of life freely. There's the, the river that makes glad the city of God. That's a glad sound. Can you hear that gurgling? That is a glad sound, a lovely sound. And it's clear and clean. And that's the presence of God. That's the life of our God. He gives to us clean and clear. And he gives us joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I'm encouraging you today while I'm on the go, while you're on the go, be encouraged that God is your strength and your refuge. And he is flowing his river to make his city glad, his people glad. And I am glad. I am glad that you are in the household of God. And God has a kingdom purpose for you. And he's supplying that fresh, clean, clear, joyful sounding water to your life. May God increase the joy of your life. Bless you. Praying for you. I'm on the go. And as you're on the go, be inspired that the city of God is being made glad by his river, that he's supplying the river you need. 
And as you spin that water, as you're on the go, he will replace that water in your life. God bless you.